Okay. So we introduce the probability distribution to simply say that where we have problems that involve uncertainties, then we can use it to address the problem. As I said, with electricity demand, we can use probability distribution to unravel the uncertainties that are around it. Then again, we expect that at the end of this session, all of us in this class would appreciate what random variables and probability distributions are. Importantly, the concept of random variables, the concept of or the ideation behind discrete and continuous probability distributions, discrete probability distributions. Then under discrete probability distribution, we we'll focus on three main discussions. The binomial distribution, how it's applied, and what are some of the problems that we can identify to apply them with. We we'll discuss Poisson distribution, what is it, the characteristics, the principle behind it, how do we solve a probability distribution. The, the key thing is how do you even identify a problem that, ha that requires a Poisson distribution to use. The last one, we'll talk about the hypergeometric distribution. So keenly, my discussions are going to be based on this main discrete probability distributions. And um, I, I only hope that at the end of the class, we will appreciate the principles or the, 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 the theories behind these um, probability distributions. Again, you have to read from these textbooks chapter four, chapter five of uh, Governor Shannon Fry, or you can look at the Anderson et al. book to make reference from. Why do you guys say I'm not recording the session? I'm recording the section. <laughs> Let's go on. So what is a probability? This is what you did in level 200. Okay, so I'm not going to I'm not going to be telling you what it is and all that, but the principle behind it, as we said, where we have uncertainties regarding a phenomenon, then we can use it. Usually we're saying that a probability measures numbers from the scale of zero to one, okay? And we are looking at the likelihood or the chance of an event occurring. And if that event will occur, or it's not occurring, then for the probability that the event will not occur, constitutes what zero cannot occur, whereas the event one is certain that what it will occur. Then an event with a probability greater than zero and less than one involves uncertainty. So just to say that on a scale of one to zero to hundred percent, what is the probability that um, Chelsea will score Real Madrid uh, at either Santiago Bernabeu or a return league to Stanford Bridge. Maybe the probability that Chelsea will score Real Madrid is about 80%. Or Real Madrid so scoring Chelsea is 100%. Whichever way, these are events that we, they, we are, it's still uncertainty, but we can provide some level of what? The probability of occurrence so that we measure that as such. So you are also told, or uh, in your UGBS 202, you are told what experiments are, such that if we are looking at probability, then an experiment is a process of obtaining certain outcomes. Okay, so we are looking at outcomes for uncertain events. And an experiment will produce exactly what? One outcome. If we know the outcome, then we can go further to measure. And we also, we also define what a sample space is to indicate that it's a set of all possible outcomes of an event, experiment. In probability, the set of all possible outcome is assumed known, okay? For instance, like I said, is it that Chelsea beat Madrid or Madrid beat Chelsea or Chelsea lose or Madrid would lose. So it's either going to be a win win for Chelsea for the two legs. 
It's going to be win-win for Madrid for the two leagues. It's going to be what? Win, lost for Chelsea or win, zero for Real Madrid or lose-lose for Madrid or lose-lose for what? Chelsea in the two possible outcomes. We can use this as an ideology to then go further to calculate the probability given that these events will be what? Okay. That's when we say that we know possible outcome is what assumed. For instance, if I throw a coin three times, okay, then the sample space will consist of the possible outcome based on the experiment that I provide. If I throw the coin three times, it's possible that all the three coins will give me what? Head, head, head. Or I'm going to have what? Head, head, tail. Head, tail, head. Head, tail, tail. Tail, head, head. Tail, head, tail. Or tail, tail, head. Or tail, 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 tail. This is what we refer as what? The sample what? Space. Similarly, if I have a die and I throw it, there are six possible outcomes. Okay, it's either I'm going to get number one, or I'm getting two, or I'm getting each one of these numbers. This is also the sample space that we refer to. Then we said an event is any subset of the word sample word space. So if I know this and I said that what's the probability that I'm going to get only tail, that is going to be what the event. So tossing a die means that I'm going to get these possible what outcome referred to as my sample space. So I'm saying that what is the probability that I'm going to obtain what even numbers? Then you have to you, you should by now know what an even number or a prime number is at this time. Then you define them. So the probability that I'm going to get an even number is either two, four, or what? Six or two, four, or six. Good. So by this, we can now go to random variable, which we also looked at it in level 200. And we said that we have to find a way to quantify those possible outcomes, find numbers to define the possible outcome based on what the sample of what or sample space. Therefore, a random variable is a real value function defined on a sample space which assign values to each of the experiment outcomes, okay? In that sense, in a toss of a coin, the number of heads obtained may be described by what? Random what? Variable. Or as we, indicate here, we indicated here, the sample space head, 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 if you want to quantify them, then we have to represent them in the form of what? random what variables. So let's look at this. What grade do you anticipate to end in UGBS 301? I know some of you say all sort of things. However, we know the possible grade is from A to what? F. If we want to find a random variable, all we need to know is that what kind of value can we place for, for A all the way to what F? So we say that let A represent one, B plus represent two, B plus B represent three, C plus represent four, respectively. This now becomes the random variable representing the possible what grades as we define from A to what F. So note that the original letter grades were just changed to numbers. And this is where we refer to these possible outcome values as what random variables so we can have different types of or we can have two types of random variables we have the discrete and the continuous random variable for discrete our main concern is to say that has only a finite number of possible outcome then for continuous random variable we are looking at variable that has what continuum of what possible or what outcome. 
just to define that we're saying that discrete random variables can only assume a countable number of what values here we are looking at whole numbers okay whole numbers to say that let the number of times a four comes up when a die is true what twice we know the values that are going to come based on their random variables are going to be whole numbers zero one and what two that is either the number four would not show up at all will appear once or appear what in both what row these are random variable numbers countable numbers of what values again we can represent let x be the number of heads obtained when a coin is a coin is tossed what four times then the possible random variable which are discrete numbers or discrete random variable are going to be this possible what value so just to say that anytime you are looking at discrete random variable we are looking at numbers in whole the whole number okay just countable number of what values then some examples that we can classify as discrete random what variable number of complaints per day we can count the number of complaints is it that one two or zero complaints number of tvs in a household we can count them easily number of cars passing between 7 a.m to what 9 a.m we are looking at cars and cars may be counted based on their appearance you can also have random variables discrete random variable with only two possible outcomes only two possible outcomes this will we'll be having our discussion mostly if i say we are looking at gender there are only two possible outcomes is it a male or what female even those who are saying they are something something they still classify themselves as male or what female for defective product we may either have a yes or what a no product then in a game there is either a win or what lose so two possible outcome can occur and we may also look at continuous random variables as we said can assume uncountable number of what values here that is where we can look at numbers that represent the form of what decimals and fractions okay if we are measuring the thickness of an item we may have quarter three quarter or one half or whatever those values are continuous random variable time required to complete a task uncountable temperature of a solution same height in inches is going to be the same these can potentially take any value and here any value means that they can possibly be fractions or decimals or even whole numbers as well depending only on the ability to measure what accurately good so that defines what a continuous random variable is and a discrete random variable with such examples as we've assumed these are all review so i hope these are things you already know then what is a probability distribution we say is a way of describing the uncertainty of some numerical outcome therefore a probability distribution assign a probability to each word possible outcome of a random exp experiment so anytime there is a an experiment that occurs okay we want to look at the possible what outcome then we'll be looking at what for all random variables what are their corresponding what probabilities remember as we we're looking at this one to say that if we tossed a number we tossed a, a coin we are looking for head when a coin is tossed what four times so what is the probability that we we'll have what two possible what heads then what no since we know the random variable we need to also compute it what corresponding probability and that is what this uh, explanation is up to that 
it is that's nothing more than a list of our random variable and their corresponding probability. Well, we can usually also represent them in graphical form or tabular form. Graphical form, you may have uh, like a tree diagram to represent it graphically. Okay. For tabular form, we can just have this. So the X here are the possible, these are the random variables. Then we can find the probability that we have one head, which is described here. The probability that it is for two heads, the probability that will have care or three heads, and so on and so forth. So based on the outcome, we should be able to, based on the random variable, we should be able to compute the corresponding probability. For instance, as we have here, the probability distribution of the number of heads in three tosses of a coin is described below. Okay, so we can look at it from as an example. All probability of properties of probability distribution, we may have what we call, we can find the, if we have possible random variable, I want to know the probability of the random variable taking on a value xi is expressed as this. But we can say that the value xi, the probability, its corresponding probability should not be should be greater than or equal to what zero. It cannot attain more than what one, as we've also indicated. It cannot be more than hundred what percent. Then we can use the same analogy to compute what you call the mean or the expectation of the random variable, expected value of the random variable, and that is defined as the random variable given as x i times what its corresponding probability the sum of all of them should give us the expected what value or the mean of the random what variable. For example, let's look at this demand for electricity for next year is projected to be the following quantities, 18,000 gigawatts. We have with its corresponding probability as 40%, 25,000 with accompanying probability of 0 0.4, and 30,000. If this year's demand is 17,500, what should be the additional amount to plan against if the energy ministry would want to plan for increase using expected value as analysis? What is the related standard deviation of the increase in demand? With this example, we have to define the random variable of increase in demand for next what period, okay? So if demand for next year is going to be 18,000 and demand for this year is 17,500, then the random variable for the first is the difference between the projection and what actually what happened. That is the value here. So this 18,000 minus mm -hmm. 17 should give us 500. Respectively, this will give us 7,500 and this will give us 12,500. We are giving that 18,000 possible probabilities, 0.4, 40%. That for 25,000 demand is also 40%. Remember, we said the sum of all probabilities should be equal to one. So if we know probability for these two, then the last one should be one minus what? The addition of the two, which is 0 0.8, that's 0 0.2. So that's the probability. The expected value is this one here. As we said, it is what? The xi times what? The probability. The summation of all of them should give you the expected value. Um, so, then we can use the same to compute the variance or the standard what deviation as we have them shown at this on this uh, slide. All right. So all that I did was just a review, something you already know because we did that in level what two hundred, just to warm you up. Like I said, the main discussion. I'm going to look at three different what probability distributions. The first one is 
binomial distribution. What is a binomial distribution? Under what circumstances do we use binomial distribution? And how do we apply binomial distribution to a given what problem? So as you see on the slide, a binomial distribution is used to describe real world phenomenon that involves an event which has results for only two possible outcomes. Please note that binomial distribution is applicable where the phenomenon or the occurrence of that event has only two possible outcomes. The mm -hmm. same event is repeated multiple what, times, okay? Means that I'm performing the same experiment, but I'm expecting that the events that are going to occur is going to be what, repeated multiple what, times. Then it also describes the distribution of success in a series of what, trials. Then we can define out of the number of trials given us N, what is the probability that an X of them will be what, successful. The example I was given between Chelsea and Real Madrid, it's a Champions League. At least we are in the knockout stage. You are either kicked out or you are still what in. So what are the possible outcome for these two teams playing uh, next week? Or when you go to a beauty pageant, those who move from stages to stages, what are the, why, why would you, uh, under what circumstances will you be left in the pageant? When they are doing the eviction, you are either evicted or you stay in the competition. And we can look at for a number of what appearances that the, the what do you call them? Those who appear every time, the, the, is it the models? The number of appearances they come on stage. Okay, this is a repeated event, but you are either evicted or what you stay. And when they, at the end of the day, they are only looking for what? Who won the crown? So the distribution as we describe of what? success based on the mm -hmm. n-word tries, then what is the probability that a certain uh, model, model, okay, i.e. number four, number five, will be successful in the beauty pageant? Or what is the probability that when Madrid comes to Stanford Bridge, Chelsea is going to what? Score them. These are all what? possible outcomes, but we are looking at where the outcomes are. We are only looking at two possible outcomes. Then the binomial distribution can mm -hmm. be applied. Another example we can have in a manufacturing plant, go to Vortic in the production of the Vortic bottle water. At the end of every production process, these items are coming out to be acceptable or what defective. So either the product is defective or it is what acceptable. You can also have in the example when a firm is bidding for a contract. I'm not sure a firm will bid for a contract and they tell them, oh, this is drawn. Uh, nobody, uh, what do you call it? Mm -hmm. Didn't win or you didn't get a contract, but you were at par with somebody. So that's the end of the bidding process. No, you are either getting the contract or you are not getting it. If you are marketing research that you want to find out if customers who um, patronize your product or not, two outcome. Yes, they will buy or no, they will not buy your product. Or you have a new job that you've applied to there's a possibility that you, you get what acceptance of offer or they will reject you entirely. These events can be classified as what a binomial what distribution. 
So what are the characteristics of binomial distribution just by summarizing its uh, implication? As we said, a trial event has only two possible outcomes, success or failure, or yes or no. There is a fixed number of N identical odd trials. The trial of the experiment are independent of each other. Each trial is mutually exclusive from the other. Whatever will happen in the second trials has nothing to do with what will happen with the third trial and so on and so forth. Then the probability of success we define as what P also remains what constant from a trial to what trial. The number of times that you bid for a contract, your success is you get a contract and it doesn't matter how many bidding you, for some uh, contractors, they always win a contract, okay, from a bidding what process. Then if we know the number of success to be P, then the number of failure is going to be one minus what P which we classify as what Q. So let's name Q as the probability of what? A failure. If we know that, we can look at this example and find how we can represent it or understand whether it's a binomial problem. If it is, how do we solve the problem? Um, household security produces and install 300 custom-made home security units every week. The units are priced to include one day installation series by two technicians. A unit with either a design or production problem must be modified on site and will require more than one day to install. Household security has completed an extensive study of its design and manufacturing system. The information shows that if the company is operating at standard, at standard quality, 10% of security units will have problems and will require more than one day to what install. The binomial distribution applies to this situation because of the following condition. One, there are only two possible what outcome mm -hmm. when a unit is installed. It is either good or what defective as stated. Means that finding a defective unit in this application will be considered a success. Please note that finding a defective unit is considered a success because that's the whole idea. Either it is a good design or the otherwise. A success outcome, when we observe the outcome of what interest, then each unit is designed and made in the same day. The outcome of a security unit, which is either good or defective, is independent on whether the preceding unit was good or was defective. The probability of a defective unit, as we've described here, is what? 0 0.10 remains constant from one unit to the other. It doesn't matter whether the first one that we identified the probability of defective, the second one we did, it will still be what repeated. The probability is what 10% for any defective product occurring. Then the probability of a good unit, which is Q, is one minus P giving us what 0 0.9 remains constant from unit to the other. So based on these conditions from the problem we have, we conclude that a binomial probability distribution can be applied to unravel the uncertainties around the installation of what security. So let's make progress. To determine the likely cause of defect, design or quality, the quality assurance group this is a continuation of the question. Group at Household Security developed a plan for dismantling a random sample of four security units each week. Four, so they did four 
dismantling. Mm -hmm. We want to know if the sample size is four, then what is the probability that at all the four dismantling will have what defective what product or at the second dismantling will have what two defective or at the third dismantling will have what three defective or what about doing the four sampling process for dismantling process we will not have any what defective then like we discussed we need to define is either at the first is either good or what defective or nothing at all so if nothing at all then the random variable that there will be no defective is what zero the random variable value again that at one dismantling we have only one dismantling is defined as this so these are the possible what outcome but remember we are saying that the, the possible uh, random variable values for them but remember a possible outcome is either defective or what good qualifies for binomial what distribution so my question therefore what is the probability that Will, there will be what? No defective at the first sampling, one defective, one defective at the second sampling, you have two defective, third sampling, you have three, or during the four process, sampling process, we have what? Four defective among what? The samples. So we need to know the probability for each of the possible what? Outcome based on their random what? And this can be expressed in this form. Let G equals to units. That is good. Means are not defective. Remember the probability that it's defective is what? 10%. So the probability that it will be defective, it will not be defective, it's going to be what? 90 what percent. Mm -hmm. uh, can you all hear me at this point? People are still there is so much yes sir issues on campus okay sir please we can hear you perfect perfect okay let's make progress mm -hmm. so if we know that the probability that the product won't be defective is 90% it's stated clearly here and the probability that it will be what defective we know is given at 0 0.41 so at the first sampling, all the products are, all the items were all what good. Remember means that there will be what? Zero what defective. If there is zero defective, then we are looking at what? Probability that it will be good, probability that is good, probability that is good, probability that is good. And we are told that that is 90%. So the product of these four will give us what? 0 0.6561. That's the probability that we won't have any defective what, uh, product during a sampling. What about the probability that we'll have only one defect given as this? Remember, we have four main what activity sampling procedures. The probability that we have only one defective can mean that at the first dismantling we had good, the second we had good product, the third we had good product. It is the fourth that we have defective. That's one possible outcome. The next one is that we may have first to be good, second to be good, the third will be what? Defective. And the fourth one will be what? Good. We are not done. These are possible events. During the third sampling, we may have the first to be good, the second to be bad, third good, and the other good. Remember, we can't have good, 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 or bad, bad. Bad, bad, good within the first sample. It's just at one trial. Then the probability that the first sample rather gave us defective. Then the second gave us good, 
the third gave us good and the fourth one gave us good. So you see that this is one possible outcome. This is one possible outcome. When we are, we are expecting just one defective, this is the second, the third outcome, and that's the third outcome. Means that we need to know the probability for these occurrence. That's this and that. Multiply and add them together. So this is the first one. Probability that you have what good, 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 and one defective. 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.9 times what? One should give us what? Uh, that's the value we have here. This one. Likewise, mm -hmm. the other one, 0.9, we have one, two, three, good, and one defective. One, two, three, good, and one defective. So the multiplication of all these and summing up should give us what? 0 0.2916. Means that the probability that it's only one defective is going to give us it. Then we can also do that, the probability that during the second dismantling, what is the probability? The third dismantling, the fourth dismantling. This is what you see here in summary. For if we are doing, as we said, uh, for the sec, the that the probability that we we'll have one defective will have four ways. The probability that we we'll have two defective will have what six possible ways. The probability that we we'll have three defective during the four possible. In, uh, installing will have what four ways and the probability that we have all indication in, uh, showing that we have what defective defective it's also showing what four what number of defective are four okay it give us only what one way it's, although we have four possible we are looking at the probability that all the four this month claims should give us what Defective, defective, defective can only occur for what one way. So this is to summarize the problem that you have. When we we'll look at how to now solve. So you all remember the rule for combinations. I mean, those of you, I mean, either elective mass or so. Okay, permutation and combination. Okay. So a more effective method exists for counting the number of ways binomial event can work. <laughs> so we use this what formula to rather look at the possible number of ways that the event can work. Okay. Um, okay, not all of us did elective mass I hear. That's why I'm going to take my time to go through with you. That's not a problem. So a combination is the number of ways of picking X on ordered outcomes from N possibilities. And we can express this as such, which is defined as what? Where N factoria, okay, means that this is the possible but the n is the possibilities and these are the unordered word outcome giving us x n is the as we define let's say usually we say the sample size but that is the the number of possibilities that we want to involve in a trial okay n factorial means that if n is a number two two factorial is two times what one Three factorial is what? Three times two times what? One number. I hope that is okay. That's six. Those two said they didn't do. Uh, four factorial is four times three times two times one. It give you like 24. And so like zero factorial by definition is what? One. So note that. So as we've indicated here, n factorial is what? n, then n minus one into bracket on, on, on to give you the value that you are looking for. Then X factorial also is expressed as this. Zero factorial, as I said, by definition equals to one. So by combination, somebody is giving us bad feedback. I've told you I'm recording this lecture. <laughs> All right, so 
by nx we say in that combination number of combination of x objects selected from an n object we can also use this one or refer this as the binomial what coefficient this guy here that's a binomial what coefficient so for example if you are using the binomial coefficient the number of ways that two defectives can occur in a sample of four will be what two defective as we may, the example we're given in the number of four isolation means that n is now defined as our four x is defined as our two then we can express it and compute what use the binomial coefficient to give us the number of what ways the table i show in summary this is what can happen then if we know the number of ways we can go further to determine the probabilities thus we know it's going to be what six good 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 then we'll be having what two what defective when we do calculate it it should give us what the probability then what is the probability that three defective or four defective yes ishmael kote so what does the x stand for oh well we just define what x is i didn't really hear that part please x is what the unordered outcomes is that okay okay good then if it is three defective i'll give i want you to do this if it is three defective what to be the possible ways and what is the probability if it is four defective what are the possible ways and what are we just substitute just as we've done here substitute the same into them and get the possible ways then after that you compute their respective probabilities in effect if we want to do or compute for each one of the trials each one of the successes in the n trials as we've been looking at each of the defective product in the four trials then we'll use this expression or this formula that for if it is zero trial what is the probability x is zero n is still four p is defined as the probability of what success probability of a success per what trial q is defined as the probability of what failure given that if we know that p is success then q is going to be one minus what p i've defined this then x my friend that asks is the number of success when a success is defined as what we are looking for in example given that it will be zero success one success two success and so on all the way to what end then we can also define the number of failure if we know the number of success and the number of failure the number of failure is going to be what n minus what x that's what you see here respectively n is defined as a random what sample size that's the number of what trials if we know this then if this is a question that we are looking for that when i flip a coin four times we want to know the number of times head will what okay therefore the first may denote that we we'll have no head second toss we we'll have only one head third toss we we'll have two heads second to uh, toss third we we'll have what we and what but what makes this a binomial problem when we flip a coin there are two possible outcome either head will occur or what tail what will occur that is why this qualify for a binomial what distribution uh, problem so let's solve this quickly i'm just going to go through this for us to understand it so if you have your calculator by you please take it and let's solve this example quickly 
for the binomial distribution. Let me pick, uh, today I've not written anything. So let me start by writing, okay? Our example is that we have We are given that when we flip a coin, there are possibility that we'll have different one events occurring, given that the random variable is where we have no head, just one head, two heads, three heads, and what four. And we are given that the number of trial is four times. Okay. Probability that we'll have heads is given as what 0.5 means that the probability that there will be no head means 1 minus 0 0.5, which is also 0 0.5. Given this, we can now use the binomial distribution because we know we are either getting head or what, tail, which qualify for the binomial what, distribution. So by definition, we can find for when x, there is no head, when we have one head, when there's two heads occurring, three heads occurring, or four heads occurring, where each of the occurrence is defined as what? N factorial, X factorial into bracket N minus X. That's the number of failure factorial times the probability of what? Success, given that a certain occurrence is is uh, okay, uh, appearing or happening, then the failure, we also know that n minus x is the probability of number of what failures. Then we pick each one after the other and compute their respective what probability. So what is the probability that there will be no head? Probability that there will be no head means that x is what, zero. If x is zero, then we can go further to express or compute probability that there will be no head as what? P zero equals to what? We know n is four. So four factorial here, x should be zero times what? n minus four minus what? Zero factorial times zero, five raised to the power zero times 0 0.5 raised to the power of 4 minus what? 0. Who is confused with this expression? Is there any confusion here? No. Sir, um, please. Yeah. I, uh, the Q, sir, please, the Q, why is that you didn't do it 1 minus 0 0.5, then you raise the power of 4 minus 0? No, but this is what we have okay. here. Please, That's I the, think the zero, 0 should be. <laughs> Hello? I was, I'm thinking the 0 0.5, you should have made it 1 minus 0 0.5 before you raise the exponentials. Uh, but what is the difference? We know that Q is the probability of failure. If I do 1 minus 0 0.5, raise the power 4 minus 0, what's the, what, what would be that? You've already computed Q already. So you don't need to come and do 1 minus 5.0.5 again. That is why you first of all have to define what Q is before the expression. Please, is that okay? Is that okay? Yes, it. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, whose hand was up again? Oh, well, we are fine. So I'm okay. I, I wanted to correct uh, zero factorial, but you've done oh, okay, it. Okay, it's just my hand is faster than my mouth. Yes, Messi or Feb, yeah. Messi or Feb, you have any problem? Uh, Mr. Ray. Sir, please, the random sample size, mm -hmm. it's zero. But if not written zero on top, is it zero that if written or it's n? Look at what we expressed here. This is the formula. N is the sample size. Okay, so I can't come and write zero at the top. Please okay, it's 
Yes, Ellen, Ellen, Ellen Papo. Yes. Yes, sir. Sir, please, I want to ask the proper, uh, the probability of success. Hello, sir. Yes. Please, the probability of uh, success is trial. The P, why is it 0 0.5? Oh, but that is the that's the information we had from the question. I didn't conjure that. So you always know the probability that at least, like we said, for binomia, you are it's certain that you know the probability of a certain event occurring. But that event has let me use subset in each one of them. Those that's why we define that if we know that the probability that of success trial is a certain value what is the probability that trial will actually occur in different what multiple times of what trials is that okay yes thank okay you. Uh, last question from ishmael ishmael kote All right, I guess it's sorry, sir, sorry, sir. it was an issue. All right, so let's go on. So we can now simplify this expression here. Those of you said you haven't done uh, this one before. Four factorial is simply to say that you are looking at what? Four, which is the beginning comma times the numbers that are below it. Let me just say, make that statement to simplify your understanding. What are the numbers that are below what? Four. Three, two, one. So three, four times three times two times one. Four times three, 12, 12 times two, 24, 24 times one is what one. So this simply say this is 24 over zero factorial we've defined as one. Four minus zero is what zero. Four factorial is what 24. Zero point five raised the power zero is what one times 0 0.5 raise the power what? four should give you 0 0.0625. Yes, okay, thank you. This cancel is other. So probability that there will be no defective is what? 0 0.0625. Probability that will have one what? Defective product. It's going to be four factorial, mm -hmm. Divided by what? One factorial, four minus one factorial times what? 0 0.5 raised the power one times 0 0.5 raised the power four minus what? One, that is the number of what? Failures. This simply will give you another 24 factorial. 24 divided by, this will give you three factorial. Three factorial is gonna be six. So you have 24 divided by six times 0 0.5 times what? The next one, this 0 0.05 raised the power, three should give you a 0 point what? 0 0.125. One, one great. Then again, this cancels, you have four, four times 0 0.5 times. This should give you what? The probability that will have only one effective should be 0 0.25. Those having the calculator, is this correct? Yes, it's correct, 0 0.25. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it's correct. And the next one, let me increase this. So the next one, we have for ability that we have what? Probability that we are having what? Two defective by expression. You have again four factorial, two factorial, four minus two factorial times what? 0 0.5 probability of success, which is two times 0 0.5 raised to the power four minus two. Again, this should give you 24. This will give you four. This will give you four, four times four. No, this is two factorial is also what? Two, sorry, two factorial is two. So two times two will be four. So you have 24 divided by four times 
0 0.5 raised to the power 2 is 0 0.25, right? Yes, sir. Times what? Another 0 0.25, because this will give us the same here. This goes here, six, six times what? These two guys, to give you what value? If you have the calculator, give us quickly. Uh, 0 0.375. 0 0.375. Perfect. What about TV? By substitution. 3 factorial, 4.4 4 minus 3 factorial times 0 0.5. 3 times what? 0 0.54 minus what? 3. So this should give us again, you have 24 here. 0 3 factorial will be 6. 6 times 1. So 24 divided by 6 again times what? What would be this one? This will be 0 0.125. Is that 0 0.25. 0 0.125. 0 0.125. Okay, times 0 0.5. Yes, sir. 0 this will give you that. For my expression, mm -hmm. this should give you what? Mm, for 0 0.25. Right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. 0 0.25. Okay, so then the last one. 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial, 4 minus 4 factorial times 0 0.5 for 4, 4, 0 0.5, 4 minus 4. This should give you what? Um, you should have 1, because this eventually will be 0, 0 factorial 24, 24. To give you 24 divided by 24, 0. 0 0.0625 for this times 0 0.5. This will, no, this will give you one. This should give you one. This will be zero. So you should have what? In fact, 0 0.0625. 0 0.0625. So all that we are saying that with binomial, you can find the probability that during the trial, the success, that you can find the probability that during the trial, the success, if this is the success, what is the probability that you have either two or three heads appearing. You don't have to go through all this. Probability that there will be either two or three means that we want to know the probability for heads occurring, two heads occurring, probability that there will be three. Then we add this plus this will give us the probability that X is equal to two and what, three. Or what is the probability that X is greater than one? Uh, I see two hands. Ellen Papo, yes, ask your question. Then after Ellen, we have Obed. Ellen, please ask your question. Yeah, please, I've already asked. Okay, uh, who else? Uh, David. David Minta. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, in this, the same question, if you are asked, what is mm -hmm. after the third trial? What is the mm -hmm. probability that no head will occur? That means n will be, it will be equal to three, right? No, the trial is still four. Or, or say that but again. Is it, you, what is the probability that after the third trial? After the three trial, is it the final? Is it the number of trials you are doing? The yeah. number of trials. This yeah. is sorry x. So that you don't get everybody confused. These are not the number of what? The number of trial. Sorry, what is happening here? Um, sorry. I get what you mean. Let me explain before uh, others get confused. What you see here is not the number of trials. We know the number of trial is what? Four. This to say that during that for each trial, these are the possible outcomes that can, for a successful outcome, these are the number of possible what events that can occur. Please note that. So what you can say is, what about if it is three trials and we are looking at the number of what success during these three trials, what would be the event that will be occurring? 
David, is that okay? Oh, sir, I'm asking. They've given you the number of trials to be four, okay. but they can ask you after the third trial, what will be the probability that it will be zero uh, third or one head or two, two head? If it is zero, okay. So if it is zero head, then you do the probability for zero plus the probability that there will be only one, okay? Or plus the probability that there will be only one, two heads. You add them together and that gives you the appropriate question that is being asked. We can also say that what is the probability that uh, more than two heads will occur? What does that mean? More than two heads will occur is that you are looking at the probability will be either three heads or what? Four heads. So you only do four, three, and four. Please, we get it. David, is that okay? All right. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, Ellen, you still want to ask a question? Oh, Fifi, is your hand up? Masahudu. Lois. Lois. Yes, Lois. Okay, let's go on if there is no question again. So please, Emmanuel head Hotto or Hetto, whichever it is. Emmanuel. Yeah. Uh, please, my, my issues about the factorial. Mm -hmm. You were like, what factorial is, is just is equal to the numbers that are below four. So it's like four times three times two times one. So I want to ask, what about one factorial? How, how do you express that one? I only one. make this state. What is one factorial? Oh, one factorial is one times. It's one. One factorial is one. Why the stress? I was just made that statement because some people said they didn't do whatever. I said, if you want to find the factorial of a number, we just look at the number below, the number itself times all the numbers below it. That's all I try to make that analogy. Don't, don't come and confuse uh, the rest of us. Please, can you explain the final answer two and three? Which final answer two and three? Uh, Lois, yes, please ask your question. Um, please, I wanted, to, I wanted to explain the final answer. That is the P and the possibility, okay. yeah, the subset of um, two and three, X is equal to two and three. I wanted to explain that part to me because I really didn't get it. But did you understand the zero and four and one? Yeah, 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 I did. This is just a substitution. <laughs> two is two factorial here. This guy is two times one. Four minus two is what? Two. It's also two times what? One. This will give you four. Four factorial is 24. That's why we have the denominator here, four. 0 0.5 raised to the power two. It's what, 0 0.25. Four minus two is also two. So 0 0.5 raised to the power the number of failure. Raise the power two is also 0 0.25. So where is the confusion? Uh, my uh, dear Lois, three factorial is the same, four minus three. X is still three, so that's why you see the three here. Then the number of failure is what? Four minus the number of success, which is three. This raise the power one will give you 0 0.5. This to the power three will give you 0 0.125. Respectively, we have 0 0.25. Please, is this okay? Hmm. Uh, did you understand where we have to? Lois. Lois. Yeah, yes, sir. You said these are the possible one, zero, one, two, one, two three, three, and four. Yes, sir. So we did zero. Yeah. We know how we got the four factorial. Yes, sir. And we said zero factorial is one. Yes. So into bracket four minus zero factorial will be what? Four. So one times four here 
1 times 4 factorial is 1 times 24. And this is the probability. Yeah. When the occurrence is one defective or the result is one defective, we substituted one here, four minus one, with the power one, four minus one again. It's the same thing with it. So that, there shouldn't be any confusion. I was only saying something different. That what's the probability that you have exactly four, four heads? Okay. And that is, you only do this guy here. What's the probability that you have two or three heads? This is the probability that it is two plus the probability that it is three. So we said this 0 0.325 plus 0 0.2 what one. Yeah. Please note, yeah. at no point should you have a value greater than what one when you are computing the probabilities. If you do, pack your things and get out of there or stop the stop whatever you are doing. Asamoah uh, Makafu, Makafu. Yes, go ahead. Say, um, please, I want to ask, you said uh, by definition, zero factorial is equal to one, but I don't actually get it. I want you to explain it to me. Hello. By, by definition, zero factorial is what? One. Uh -huh. Yes. And you don't understand I, it? Yes, I don't understand. Or should I take it in good faith? Oh. Some of you, I now have to teach you uh, this is not a mathematics class. If you say, if I have to go and be proving formula, you are the same people that will be saying confused. Note that we said zero factorial equals to one. Okay? okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, last one, Isaac Asari. Isaac, please go ahead. Hello, sir. Yes. Um, so I wanted to tell them that they can use the calculator to find the factorial I know, of a number. I know, I know they can use the calculator to do that. Thank you very much. Those of you are asking, do you all have calculator? That's the thing. Yes, yes. sir. You can yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Your calculator can substitute all these. Oh, yes. But I'm okay. trying to let you understand yes, sir. step yes. by step how to do that. So, uh, is it Isaac Asari? Are you a pastor or a prophet? Reverend. You are a reverend. Thank you, Reverend Minister, for making our life easy. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, prophet uh, Isaac, we thank you. Okay. Let's move on to the next, uh, uh, where is my slide? Yeah, slide five. Okay. Let's share, let me share quickly. Okay, so we, that is it for the binomia. Uh, uh, somebody too is helping you that uh, shift plus x, uh, what do you call it? Shift plus x, raise that. I don't want to, we, we know what to do later, so let's go on. So, as I said, we can also represent this in a form of what graph. It can also come in this form when you have what n is 5, d is 0 0.1. Then, remember, I said we can also use um. The diagram, okay. So this is a tree diagram. Good. If from this problem, if on the basis of the past experience, the store manager of shop right at Accra Mall estimate that the sorry the probability of a customer making a, a purchase when he or she enters the store is zero point three, what is the probability that two of the next three customers will make what a purchase? Okay, so first customer, we know these are the possible outcome, which is either success or what failure. Then for success, when we look at the second customer, it's either there will be success or failure, just to say, or if it was failure for the first customer, we know when the second, second customer also come, 
is either going to um, uh, customer will buy some, make a purchase or will not make a purchase. Then save for the third customer. If the second customer there was a success, means that for the second customer is a possibility that there will be what a success and what failure. And if we assume also assume that that during the second customer's appearance, there will be nothing to buy, then the third customer may also come and either buy or may not what buy. So this is just to represent if you have a problem like this, you can represent first trial, second and third. What are the possibilities that you will have all the customers buying when you have the three outcomes? Means that three, what? X is three. What's the probability that during the three, you have two of them and the other not buy? That also shows this. So we can define or still use the diagram, this tree diagram, to, calc to define the the number of what success giving us what x if we have this and i said what's the probability that there will only be two the probability that there will be two two success you are looking at what this guy here it will be equal to what okay then again we can use experiment can be described as a sequence of three identical trials one trial for each of the three customers who will enter the store. Two outcomes. The customer makes a purchase, that's a success, or the customer does not make a purchase, failure, a possible what outcome for each trial. The third, the probability that the customer will make a purchase, giving us this 30%, or will not make a purchase. One minus 30 should give you 0.07. It's assumed to be the same for all <laughs> the purchase decision of customer is independent of the decisions of the other customer, as we said, mutually exclusive what outcomes. Then that takes us to the binomial. Then this final example <laughs> at EGBS. Hey, when I the way you talk to me, honor. My goodness, who is that? Uh, Bridget. Wow. Hmm. I am I am confused now with some of you your attitude. At UGBS, 30% of students are majoring in finance. Please, this is another example. So just watch it. They are majoring in what? Finance. In a sample of 10 UGBS students. What is the probability that three of them are majoring in what? Finance. Here is either you major in finance or you major in other what? Courses. So two possible what? Outcomes from the possible trials that we are going to engage. So we looked at 10 students, which is our trial. What is the probability that we will have what? three of them major in finance. It's just the same thing that we did. You need to define the sample here is what? N is what? 10. X is three. P is what? 0 0.3. Q is going to be one minus 0 0.3. Probability that there will be failure is what? N minus X, which is 10 minus what? Three. Then you can come substitute everything and put it inside and do your work. In the third sample, what is the probability that at least three students are majoring in what? Finance. At least th three means what? Three or more. Do you remember that? Three or more. If we know, then it means that we have to do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten which will take a longer process. So all that you do is that you can find a probability that is less than what, three. Means that zero, one, and what, two. Find this probability, subtract them from what, one. So probability that you be zero, plus probability that you have one student, probability that you have what, two student, should give you the probability you are looking for. 
so that you don't go around doing at least three students and you are doing three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, add all of them. What is the probability that at most two students will be, sell, will be sell, uh, majoring in what? Finance. At most two students means that what? Greater than or equal to two means that you may have zero out of the two, you may have only one out of the two, or you have all the two. So find the probability for this. What is the probability that you have 10 students, exactly 10 students measuring? You just find X is what, 10, substitute and you are done. So this is the second example I was trying to give. If it is difficult to compute the probability that at least three students, so if you have like 200 students and we are only looking at the probability that at least three students, you can't do three to 200. Smart way is to do probability that it's less than what, three. So this is to say that you are looking for one minus probability that it is what, less than or equal to what, two. And that will be x here will be zero, x will be one, or x will be what, two. You can do it using this combination quickly, or you use the p equals to x equals to n factorial x factorial n minus x factorial times what p raised the power x times q raised the power the number of what failure and you simplify it and that should be eight we can also compute the mean and the variance and standard deviation for this that should give you the this is just by substitution we don't have to stress that or we can use the another graph to represent this for the standard deviation or the variance or the mean, okay? We can also use a table to compute the binomial table, binomial probability values, knowing the sample size, knowing the probability of success, we should be able to use the binomial what table. Then additionally, we will say that if P, the probability of success is 0.5, the binomial distribution is symmetrical and a bell shape, regardless of the sample size that we are looking at. We'll be talking about normal distribution later, but this is just additional information for you to be familiar with some of the characteristics of binomial distribution. The next one is Python. Python is also my way of simplifying it. When the total number of possible outcomes cannot be determined in a space of what trials, then we'll say that binomial distribution cannot be applied. For example, we can count the number of portholes per mile, but we cannot count the number of what non what portholes. In situations like this, we need a different probability to describe the phenomenon where we have the outcomes of interest are rare relative to the possible outcomes we use the Poisson distribution where we have the average number of outcomes of interest per unit of time or space or we are looking at space intervals at the at intervals what are the possible probability we define this guy as lambda then the mean number of occurrences is going to be what? Defined as the mu, which is going to be the average number of outcomes times, or we'll say that if this is the possible outcome, what is the real outcome given as what T? Then the number of outcomes of interest are random. And the occurrence of one outcome does not influence the other. I just like to say they are mutually exclusive, then the probability that an outcome of interest occur in a given segment is the same for all what segment. And we can use this again to define or express a Poisson distribution in order to compute the probability. Given that T here 
is the size of segment of interest. Okay, say if you are looking at intervals like two hours, this is what we expect. Then X is the number of success in the segment again. The lambda here is the expected number of success in that segment of what unit. So if I have a uh, segment of interest, what is my expected word success? Giving us what the lambda. Then we can find the mean which we've expressed as what? The time of the segment times what? The expected number of what? The success in what? The, so if you have as, um, like one hour, then you are having like 15 minutes occurrence, then we know that for 60 minutes, expected number of successes are within what? 30 what minutes. Please note that. For example, if we have the mean of 20 per every two hours, the two hours is our what? The size of what segment. Then we can say that our lambda, which is what 10 per R, please note that giving the lambda as 10 point R, our mean can be computed by looking at what? The number of what segment. And we, are, we expect that 10 actually will occur within the R, okay? We'll be using E here is a, given as the natural algorithm value, the uh, exponential value. And this is a constant. You can find this two on your calculator. Though since Isaac told us we can find everything on the calculator, this is a constant 2.718. But if you forget, you only substitute this value by 2.18, raise the power minus what the number of occurrences in an event, which is the mu times, the lambda times the time segment. For example, if we have a study conducted here showing a whole grocery shows that the average number of arrivals at the checkout section of the store per hour is what, six, six, six. For every one hour, we expect that six um, customers will arrive. Further, the distribution of for the number of arrival is considered to be Poisson what distribution. What is the probability that we have 12 customers occurring arriving at the checkout in what? One what R. Multiple people can be occurring at every time interval. And that is why we are applying the Poisson distribution. Therefore, my mu here is going to be the lambda given as the expected. Okay, and T given as the time segment, which is one R to give us the same value by expression, the probability that we have 12 customers occurring within one hour is 0 0.0661. We can also have the probability that six customers occurring within 30 minutes, okay? If it is within 30 minutes, then we know that X is six, then our mu will be equal to what? Uh, 16, times what? 0 0.5, 30 minutes. Remember this is for one hour. So if you want to know 30 minutes for the mu, it's gonna be this type, this to give us, then we express it and that should be. Like this example, patients arrive at the emergency room of Mercy Hospital at an average rate of six per hour on weekend evenings. What is the probability that four customers, four patients, sorry, will arrive in 30 minutes on each weekend, okay? To find the mean, we know an expected outcome is six per one hour, but the time segment of occurrence is what? 30 minutes. So we can convert it into R. This is in R, so we have to find, it's either you, can, you change this also in minutes, which will be difficult. Okay, so you just convert this into R, which is 0 0.5 R times this should give you three customers coming per what? Three 30 minutes. If six customers are occurring within a one hour, what is 
the number of customers are very legitimate. Given that we are expecting all the actual occurrence is what for, we find the probability and then we can also go further to find the mean and the variance for under Poisson distribution or use a table or use a graph to represent that. The last distribution is the hypergeometric. Please note that for hypergeometric, we, within, if we have N trials, okay, and sample taking without replacement, what is significant is here is that we are looking for within a trial, there should be two possible outcome per trial, two possible outcome per trial. Then we apply the hypergeometric. Yes, Albert, I agree. Let me finish before you ask your question. Then for hypergeometric, like I said, two possible outcome per trial, unlike the binomial where we say that there will be either no outcome, one outcome, two outcome, three outcome or not. Hypergeometrics looks for uh, situations where we have only two possible outcome per trial. For example, you have three light bulbs. If three light bulbs were selected from 10, of the 10, there were four defective. What is the probability that two of the three selected, the three selected are defective? Given that this is the sample and this is the four we selected, out of the four, we are saying that for three, what's the probability that out of the three bulbs selected from the four, two will be what defective small n here is defined as the probability that three will be selected and x as such two possible outcome it's expressed again where we know n minus x here should give you six n minus three here should give you one then this is the x being computed as such two you should be able to express X is four, big X is four, small X is two. The probability is so 0.43. So for hypergeometric, like I said, the concern, the main issue is that you're looking for two possible outcomes per a trial. So if it is about four, what is the probability that out of the four, you have two defective what box? So in summary, these three distributions can be used at the various what? interval but again we want to look at the characteristics of these um, distributions and why they can be applicable based on the phenomenon that we want to what, measure